Water cooling parts for Skunk Works were provided by Performance PCs. For the largest online selection of PC modding and water cooling parts, head to performancepcs.com. Well guys, after more than a solid week of building and prepping and redoing things, Skunk Works version 3.726, I don't, I, I keep track of how many times we've changed this system, but whatever it is, it's done. In terms of performance, nothing's really changed when it comes to performance parts. Uh, in fact, I haven't even tried to see if I can overclock my 5960X any farther on the Gigabyte X99 SoC Champion motherboard that I'm using here, which has got those extra pins in there that you know Asus has put on some of their motherboards, which is supposed to allow for better stability and higher overclocks. Maybe I'll play with that in a little bit, but so far hitting 4.6 gigahertz, which is what I had on the EVGA motherboard, has been absolutely no problem whatsoever. Uh, didn't take any custom tweaking or anything like that. The memory was it's running at 2666 right now. Even though it's 3000 megahertz dims, uh, I haven't tried to really fine tune anything. I just went to the settings that I knew worked. Still running the same three, uh, three-way Titan X is in there running uh, about 1400 megahertz. They are 1500 megahertz stable, uh, but I'm trying to keep the heat down just a little bit because even though I have a 560 millimeter and a 280 millimeter rad, I'm still getting, a, there's still quite a bit of heat that dumps into there. Uh, but one of the things I wanna say is that I did have some discussions with some of the folks in uh, at Mayhem's trying to figure out why my GPU temperature loops, uh, or my GPU temperatures in the loops were getting hotter and hotter. And they did uh, tell me that as the nanoparticles start to break down and change color like you were seeing, and they're absorbing all of the crud that was happening in the loop, which we still don't know exactly what it is, uh, the effective cooling of the pastel does actually diminish. So it, it actually was the fluid that was causing the temperatures to go up, but what caused the temperature or the fluids to break down, we still don't know yet. And in fact, even, even given all the crap that's gone on with them this week, I'm still going to work with them to try and figure out what the problem is because that would be very useful information for you guys as a community. And it's definitely an obligation of mine to make sure that we can figure this out since I have some of the clues here to try and make a better product. The only part, the parts that changed in here, obviously three new water blocks. I went with clear because I thought they would look really, really good. I like the way they look. They look fantastic as far as I'm concerned. Um, the clear CPU block. And then we added the motherboard into the mix. Now the South, or the, I call I keep calling it Southbridge. The chipset is actually running at about 25 degrees Celsius under load. And then the VRM is actually running at 30 degrees Celsius under load overclocked. So obviously the including of the motherboard in the loop was not necessary, but much more effective than running air cooling in there. Uh, in fact, the temperatures don't really seem to change. They always seem to be pretty constant at those temperatures, whether under load or not. Now with uh, the air cooling and the massive heat pipes and stuff that they had on this motherboard, it's only about 15 to 20 degrees Celsius lower than as if, as if it was air cooled. But it's one of those things where it was like, might as well at least include it in the loop. 
Now, of course, the main thing I checked and I let run for hours actually was Valley Benchmark and then I did some Fire Strike and stuff. Now, the scores didn't change. Obviously, the hardware didn't really change. Uh, I'm still getting about a 46,000 uh, graphic scores, like 45,000 and some change when overclocked. Uh, that's a pretty big deal on Fire Strike, if you ask me, a 45,000 GPU score. Um, total score for the system is right around 30,000 uh, at the normal, Fire Strike normal, and then for Extreme and all that, I didn't run those tests yet. Uh, but again, like I said, the hardware is the same, so I don't expect it to be any different. Uh, but the temperatures prior to flushing the loop and changing out the blocks and all that stuff, uh, and changing out the fluid, we were seeing a max temperature of 63 degrees Celsius on the hottest card, which is the one that the uh, monitor is attached to. And then I was seeing anywhere between 55 and 58 degrees Celsius on the other two cards, which was for a water-cooled setup. And that was without overclocking because as the temperatures increased and I noticed that things were getting really hot in that loop, I kept bringing down the clocks to where I was all the way back to stock. And those temperatures were at stock speeds. I knew something was wrong. But now, today, I have actually let Valley Benchmark run for almost a day. I let it run for a solid day. Um, got up in the morning, loaded it up, opened up the door and the window in here so we could have some airflow. And then later last night, actually, I turned it off and the max temperature recorded while overclocked to 1400 megahertz. Yeah, the cards are capable of 1500, but I'm only doing 1400. Um, was seeing a max temperature of 44C on the main card and anywhere between 34 and 36C on the other two cards. Uh, and then when it came to stock speeds, it was ridiculously low. It was like 36C on the main card and 32 for both of the other cards. So temperatures are obviously doing very, very well. But performance wise, uh, it's pretty much all the same parts. So performance didn't really change. I'm still getting about a 45,500 graphics score on Firestrike. Uh, and then I was getting about a 30,000 score. You know, it fluctuates a little bit, but I was getting anywhere between 29,000 and 30,000 on Fire Strike score. So that's all pretty much the same as what it was when it was yellow. Now I'm not really seeing any weird temperature fluctuations at all while using the Primo Chill fluid. Time will tell, time will tell how that's gonna actually work. But so far the temperatures are amazing. The biggest temperature drop that I noticed quite honestly was the CPU because the old block that I was using, the old Supremacy block was not, it didn't have those channels that were optimized for the X99 and 2011-3 platform. Um, so I changed that out with the Supremacy Evo and I put in the optimized jet and optimized flow uh, insert for the X99 platform, the 5960X specifically. And my God, the temperatures came. My, my CPU was idling at 40 degrees Celsius prior to doing the update. And then under load was hitting about 65 to 69 or 70 C when I was rendering and putting max load on the CPU or doing A to 64. But now, now, with the proper block on there and the proper inserts, it idles at 25C. In fact, let's check right now. I'm going to I'm gonna look right now and see, because I'm kind of curious, actually. But I want to make sure that I'm not misquoting. I've already done this. I've spent a lot of time doing this, but I want to make sure I'm not misquoting anything, as Cam takes a few minutes to actually like start up sometimes. Yeah, so the CPU temperature right now is at 28C, 27C. I mean, that is pretty crazy. That 13C drop, and I'm running the same overclock. And the voltage, and no, it's not running at like crazy low voltage or anything like that. The voltage is sitting right now at 1.32 volts full time. I don't do the, uh, I don't do any of the turbo states where the CPU is allowed to ramp down. I leave it running at the full 4.6, at the full voltage 24 seven. And it is sitting right now at 1.32 volts, uh, 4.6 gigahertz, 27C idle. I am ecstatic about that because that tells me I could probably play around with a little bit more overclocking on this thing and put more voltage in it. I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna be able to hit five gigahertz stable. Uh, most of these chips don't. I think like 1% of them made it to uh, five gigahertz, but whatever, I digress. I'm super happy with these temperatures. Uh, the whole room as a whole has cooled down with this setup the way it is. So I'm pretty, pretty happy. I couldn't be any happier. Now let's talk about the color. Obviously it is not as lit up and vibrant as it was with the yellow because obviously the pastel yellow was reflecting a lot of the light and it was a bright color but I really like the way this looks. Now I'm using the NZXT Hue Plus lighting system in there which is nice because unlike using the Logisys corner sticks which I was using before um, they had a lot of LEDs in there and they were super bright and they were not really dimmable. You could dim them, you could hook them up to say a fan header and kind of reduce that percentage of fan speed which would also reduce the voltage to that header and allow them to dim a little bit. 
but they were not technically dimmable LEDs and it can burn them out. I don't think it would damage the fan header. I didn't want to find out. But the NZXT Hue Plus allows me to not only play with the colors, it allows me to play with the warmth of the light. So I don't have that really bright hyper white, although on camera, it's gonna, you know, cameras and LED lighting or any lighting for that matter are always really hard to recreate uh, and look accurate. Not to mention it's gonna depend on the way your screen is displaying it. So that might look blue, it might look purple. Trust me, in person, it's a nice warm light, very similar to like an incandescent light bulb, which is giving it a very nice warm glow in there, which is what I wanted because of the burnt orange color that we went with in this system. It's not a bright orange, it's a very burnt orange, as you can see by the color of the fluid. It's exactly what I wanted. It turned out exactly as I imagined it. And uh, by adding the nickel plated fittings in there, it gave a nice amount of bling and a nice amount of reflection and, and vibrance in there without counting on the fluid to do it. Now, before I do these systems, and it doesn't matter if it's mine or anyone else's, I spend a lot of time simply staring at it, staring at pictures of it. In fact, the wife actually asked me if the amount of time I say that I spend on these builds includes the amount of time I spend literally with my feet up on the desk just staring at it. Before I even did the tubing in this, I was sitting over there on my other desk and I was sitting back in my chair, just arms folded, probably for a solid hour, just staring at it to try and visualize. I'm a very visualized person. I don't do Photoshop. I don't, I don't sit there and do mock-ups. I just do it in my head and then I do the best I can to recreate what I saw as my vision of what would look like an awesome system and put it all into the case. And I think it turned out pretty damn good. Now, of course, it's not absolutely perfect. There are some things about it that I don't like. Like for instance, the front panel connectors are uh, red and yellow, uh, yeah, red and yellow wire that are not sleeved all the way to the end. So you can see the tips of that, that bothers me a little bit. Um, same thing with the USB plug for the Hue Plus. It's like red, green, and white. Um, very Christmas minty colors, but you can't really see them too well. Uh, what, what you really can see and looks phenomenal in here uh, is the cables that were provided by Sanctum Sleeving. Sanctum has provided the cables for all of my systems, with the exception of when I had the 900D. That was actually provided by Lutro and those were extensions. But all of the colors and all of the, uh, the cables that you've seen custom sleeve since then have been provided by Joe over at Sanctum Sleeving and he is like an absolute master when it comes to this. I don't have the patience, I don't have the time, and I certainly don't want to deal with, you know, quite honestly, fucking up my system because I got some terminals incorrect. So if you guys want to do some amazing, uh, cables in your system, you've got to check out Sanctum. Their website is still a work in progress. Give them some time. It's a very low uh, manpower operation and he's got a real-time job or full-time job that he does this on the side. So thanks for hooking me up, man. I, I know you don't have a lot of time for that. Now I do wish that the orange sleeving was a little bit darker and a little bit less, it's, it's not neon, but it's definitely bright. Um, I wish it was darker. That way it would match the other orange in the system, but I do think it's nice to have different shades of orange in there. Uh, part of the problem is this is the only color orange available in the type of sleeve that we went with. I could have gone darker with something like paracord. I've dealt with paracord before in bright colors. It's terrible with uh, rubber grommets leaving black smudges all over them. I dealt with that with the yellow. I didn't want to deal with that again. So I just went ahead and left it. That's one of the reasons why I went with the warmer light on the lighting. That way uh, it didn't make the, the, it didn't look like cosmic bowling, if you will. It's not a neon color. It just kind of looks like it on camera. Um, but it's definitely brighter than the other orange in the system. So I do have to give some shout outs here when it comes to building this system, because I can't afford to build these on my own and, and I wouldn't get to bring you guys these awesome updates and show you how to do these water cooling uh, systems and loops and custom work if it wasn't for my sponsors. And first one, first and foremost, performance-pcs.com. Everything you see here for the water loop, with the exception of the radiators, which they brokered by the way, those were sent by Hardware Labs all the way from the Philippines. Um, they sent me everything you guys see, the pumps, the loops, the tubing, uh, the fittings, the blocks, everything came from them, including them stepping in and sending me the proper block when I fucked up and got the wrong block for the motherboard, uh, which I still have the wrong one and, and I don't have any use for that and they can't really resell it because it's been opened. So thanks guys for that. Quite honestly, if you're looking for water cooling parts, you've got to go and check them out. The system looks awesome, but there's nothing modded in here. The case isn't modded. Case modding is something I wish I could do so much, but I don't have a shop and I don't have the tools. But check out the Modzu, MMPC Tech, Lee Harrington, Darth Beavis. Yeah, even though Darth and I had a little bit of a spat, he, he and I are still friends. 
Um, these are the, these are modders. These are guys who literally take craftsmanship and tools and, and just make some of the most amazing systems. So if you guys want to learn more about not just water cooling, but modding, like true modding, uh, and true craftsmanship to make sure you guys go and check out their stuff too. But with all that said, it is time to get out of here, guys. Do me a favor, hit me up on Twitter or the comments here or something and let me know if you have any questions about the system. It's really hard to anticipate what people are gonna ask. So I try and do the best I can to let you know about the builds before they're done. That's one of the reasons why I do the vlogs. Um, but if you guys have any questions, let me know. Maybe I'll do a follow-up video, like a Q&A of why I did this or why I did that. Because usually everything you see here, there's an alternative. There's something else I could have done and uh, I, I chose the way I did it because that's just kind of the way I saw it. But maybe there are some questions you guys have about how I did this or, or whatever. Um, again, I did videos about uh, the preparation for the system. There's some vlogs in there as well as some how to bend. Um, so even the SLI bridge, I have a video there on how I custom painted the SLI bridge, how I changed the LED color, which I think I'm going to leave white, by the way. I think the white is a really good contrast. Um, I tried to make an orange LED using the same film method, like the flash film to change the color like I did to yellow, only the orange was really hard to recreate. I tried yellow and red, I tried actual orange film, I tried multiple layers, it just wasn't turning out right. So I'm just gonna leave it white for now. Anyway guys, time to get out of here. Thanks for following the build log as always. Hope you guys like the system. If not, tell me what you would have done differently. Uh, and, and cite some reasons why you would do it, not just, I don't like orange. I mean, that's a given. Everyone has their favorite colors. I'm sure plenty of you don't like the orange. A lot of you said you hated orange, but then on Instagram and Twitter told me you changed your mind because you think it looks so good. So did I change your mind? Let me know down in the comments or on social media. Anyway guys, time to get out, times to get out of here. Apparently I can't talk. It's the New Year's. Happy New Year's guys. Have a safe New Year's Eve. And I will see you guys in the next video.